Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Now this is where I uh, take five different subjects all related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject and then I move on. There is a timer at the bottom of the screen. When it gets to zero, I move on with the next topic. So it's always quick, it's always snappy and you never know what you're going to get. Now, one of the things that people say they really love about the five by fives is live performance footage. And as the world is opening up, I am going to be trying to get more live performance footage for you and uh, I want to roll a live performance clip for you right now. Uh, this actually isn't a recent one, this is an older one. This is um, red carpet that was marketed by Jason Poulter. Now I'm going to be talking about Jason Poulter a little bit later on in this 5x5 five five. Um, but red carpet is something that I've done for years and I've done it in my cabaret show for probably the best part of seven or eight years now. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is absolutely awesome. Now, I couldn't find on my hard drive any recent footage of me doing this, probably because I've been locked in the house for the last year and a half. Um, so I'm going to play you some footage of me doing um, red carpet from like a few years ago. You can tell how old this is. I don't have tattoos and I do have Air. That's how far back we're going here. Uh, but it's, it's a super awesome trick if you haven't seen it before. It is available from Poltergeist, which is um, Jason Polter's own website. And you can also get it from most good magic dealers and even some of the rubbish magic dealers as well. Um, so here we go. Let's start off with some live performance footage. Here it is. This is a red carpet by Jason. Okay, fantastic. Good job, Luke. Uh, if we put the house lights down again, that'd be great. Because we're going to do something else right here, guys. Uh, we're going to get back to the bottle a little bit later on. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you about celebrities. Everybody in this day and age is obsessed with celebrities. And I'm talking about upset. My wife is obsessed with celebrities. I can't go five minutes without her saying, this person's married to this person, this person's married to this person, this person's putting up to this person. She's got gossip magazines on her iPad, on her computer. People, it's not just my wife, people are obsessed with celebrities. And, and I'm, I'm going to exploit that because what I have here is a sketch pad. And inside the sketch pad, we have 52 different celebrities. We've got pictures of 52 different celebrities. Uh, from, from, from hundreds of years ago, right up to present day. So we've got Albert Einstein there. We've got Bill Clinton, Darth Vader. Um, we've got, uh, uh, who have we got here? Bru um, Bruce Lee, Cl um, Cliff Richard, well, whatever. Angelina Jolie, Marilyn Monroe. We've got all the way through to Jay Leno at the very back. 52 different celebrities. Now you'll notice that each celebrity, just in case you don't know who it is, it's got their name and it's got a number next to it. That's very, very important. You'll see why in a second. Uh, I also need somebody to come up and help me. So can we have the house lights up again? I need someone to come up and help me. Uh, in fact, can we have some audience picking music, please? Because I'm going to go out and get you. Let me see. I love how when I say I need someone to come up and help me, everyone kind of starts looking down like that. Let me see. I'm going to pick a few people. I'm going to... Uh, you know, you got Helen, definitely. You can come up first of all. Everyone give Helen a big massive round of applause, everybody. Fantastic stand right there. This is Helen, everybody. House lights down again, please. That'd be fantastic. And I know Helen, but we haven't set this up in advance. I know most of the people here. We haven't set this up in advance, have we? And, and where are you from, Helen? Penguin. She's from Penguin! And apparently you're the only one, but there you go. <laughs> Helen, I've got something here for you. I have a bag. And inside the bag, there are little chips. There are 52 little chips all together. And what we have in here is we have a whole bunch of different chips with different numbers on them. What I want you to do is reach in there, mix them up a little bit, and then grab two or three chips. Just grab two or three chips. What we want to do here is prove they're all different. So just grab two or three chips out. That's very good. And uh, read the first number out for me. Two. So if you'd ended up with number two, you would have ended up on Elton John. Okay, can you give me a different number? 34. 34. If you picked out number 34, you would have ended up on Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. Give me another number? 40. If you'd ended up on 40, you would have ended up with a blank page. Oh. It's the Invisible Man. <laughs> so what we have is we have a whole bunch of different chips. They are all different. That's very important. So what we're going to do is put them back in there. Very good. And if you can stand that side of me, that would be wonderful. Now, what we're going to do this time, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to reach in and take out one chip. Now, only take out one this time. Sometimes they stick together. Make sure you've only got one. And then what I want you to do is put your hand in there, grab the one chip, and hold it in your fist. Don't look at it. Don't let anybody else look at it. More importantly, don't let me look at it, else it's kind of a stupid trick. Okay? <laughs> Just reach in, grab one and only one. Have you got one? Yeah. Very good. 
and don't let anybody see it. We're going to put the rest of them down here. That's not important. You will need the book in a second, so I'm going to put that there for you. I have another thing here, and this is a microphone. I want you to hold on to the microphone. You're not going to be doing the speaking. I'm going to be doing the speaking. But the reason I get you to hold it is I'm taking my head mic off for a minute. And the reason is I don't want people in the audience to say later on, hang on, I think I know how that worked. Craig peaked when you were looking at the number. So I'm going to switch my mic off here, and I'm going to do this. Now, I'm going to take my glasses off as well. And I'm going to blindfold myself, everybody. I'm going to blindfold myself, so there's absolutely no way. <laughs> Can you give me the microphone, please? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Helen, when I finish this trick, if you've disappeared, that's not funny, okay? I should tell you that. And the other thing is, there's very little oxygen in this. So if I'm going to pass out, I promise I'll go that way instead of your way, okay? So first of all, have a look at the number. You got the number? Yes. Very good. Put the chip down, pick up the book, and turn to the number. Turn to the page of the number. And then what I want you to do, when you've turned to that page, is look at the picture of the celebrity. Don't tell me the celebrity, but tell me, is it somebody you would recognise? Yes. Show the picture to every single person here. <laughs> okay, obviously somebody not popular. Right, close the book up, put it on the thing. Right, okay. I'm now going to read your mind. <laughs> more exciting than that. I'm now going to read Helen's mind. Congratulations on probably the single most sarcastic group who have ever heard in my life. <laughs> right, concentrate on the celebrity. This person is somebody that's alive or dead. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. I always get that first one. Concentrate. Oh, Helen. I'm seeing muscles. You might be thinking of something else. I'm not too sure. But I'm, I'm seeing muscles. I'm seeing that this is a muscular person. Is that right? Somebody, th this person is a star in film that make films about this person, is that right? Yeah. yeah! Right, I've got it. You're thinking, ladies and gentlemen, of Tom Cruise! No. Yeah. No? No. No. Okay, hang on, let me try that again. Okay, uh, uh, right, okay. D this person's got big eyes, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Big eyes. Right, I've got it. I'm so sorry, it wasn't Tom Cruise. It was Helen's fault, she wasn't thinking of the right thing. You, you, it's Darth Vader, is that right? No. It's a bit embarrassing. Uh, I've got to be honest. Uh, it's not worked. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm standing here on stage with a hood on my head. Um, Helen, who was the celebrity? Spider Man. Spider Man, and you had a free choice, is that right? I did, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Spider Man. <laughs> One more time, give a big round of applause to Helen! So one thing that I like to try and do in the 5 by 5s is I like to try and bring to your attention um, tricks that you might have missed over the course of the last few weeks, months, or even years. Um, stuff that went under everyone's radar. Now, you guys probably know how big a fan I am of JM, Justin Miller. In fact, very, very recently, um, I did an interview with JM on Talk Magic, which is still one of my favourite interviews that I've done on the channel to date. And um, Justin talked about a whole bunch of different stuff. We conversed about a loads of different things but uh, the subject of his magic came up obviously and uh, I actually mentioned that one of my favorite tricks that he's ever released was uh, a trick with a uh, with a tic tac box now I actually learned this off his second at the table lecture so you can actually learn this off his second at the table lecture which is available from all good magic dealers uh, you can probably get this from Justin himself as well I know he's got loads and loads of downloads um, but this is great because it's almost impromptu. It's uh, a, a, a trick with a tic-tac box. And basically what it is, is you have a single tic-tac in this box. You can show it all the way around. And uh, just by staring at it, you can make that tic-tac jump. Now, the first time I saw Justin do this, I was like, it's got to be thread. It's got to be electronics. It's got to be magnets. It's a special tic-tac. It's a gimmick that costs... 50 quid or something like that and in actual fact it's something that you can literally just buy a tic tac box and within a couple of seconds you can be doing this trick and it is that strong you literally show a tic tac box you can have it examined you take it back you concentrate and it jumps and there's a lot of different ways that you do that so what i want to do on this video is a bring this to your attention like i say 
you can get it from his at the table lecture so just go to uh get it as a download or a dvd it's and there's a lot of other really strong material on there as well um but there's there's so many different ways you can use it so i'm going to perform for you a simple card routine that kills when you're doing sort of a family environment so if you're in a family restaurant and there's kids there and there's adults there this works really well if you're at a wedding and there's like maybe kids and adults at the wedding and they're all on the one table this is a fantastic trick to do it's one of those tricks that fools the adults and the adults find it super impressive but the kids find the premise really funny and you're actually doing really strong magic and there's nothing really difficult to do so i'm going to perform that for you now if you want to learn the premise behind it as i say it's justin miller's second at the table lecture so Sarah, I'm going to show you a trick with a tic-tac inside a box. Can you see that tic-tac? Okay. And also a pack of playing cards, not just any playing cards, but 1914 Providence playing cards. That's right. This is a card trick of pure quality. Uh, 52 cards, 52 possibilities. They're all there. They're all different. Is that fair? Yeah. Cool stuff. And uh, I should tell you that this is no normal tic-tac. This is actually a psychic tic-tac. That's right, this tic-tac can read minds. Now, you can't see Sarah's face, but right now she's giving me her you're talking crap again, Craig face. Um, this is actually a psychic tic-tac. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to start off, Sarah, by having you take a card, take any card that you want to. It's completely up to you which card you take. Uh, you're probably not on camera there, but if you can show the camera the card, that would be amazing. Okay? Yeah. And just say stop. Stop. Uh, put the card back there. Good stuff. Is that fair? Yeah. I'm just going to give the camera one last look at it. Can you see it? Is that yeah. fair? And uh, you know what we're going to do? It's, it's, it's about halfway down, but we'll bury it further into the deck. Thank you, Gary Jones, for that. Uh, so the car's now lost in the pack. Is that fair? Yeah. So what I want you to do, and this is going to seem weird, but I want you to whisper the name of the card to the Tic Tac. You take that Tic Tac box, whisper the card. Not so loud that I can hear it or anybody else can hear it, but whisper the Tic Tac. Whisper the, uh, the name of the card to the Tic Tac. Yep. Have you done that? Yeah. Pass me that back. Now, this psychic tic-tac is now going to do its thing. Watch as I do this. Watch the tic-tac. <gasps> Did you see? 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 There was uh, right there in the middle of the deck, I think there was probably about six cards right there. Did you see that psychic tic-tac jump by magic at that point? Did you see that? Jump. Yes, I'm not convinced. Well, no, no, that, no that's because you're not, you're not convinced about the power of the Tic Tac. But we're going to uh, see if we can go further now. We'll just do this. Okay, let's see if the Tic Tac can do it. Hang on. Okay, sometimes you need to give it some support. Come on, buddy, you can do this. Come on, come on, you can do this. <gasps> Did you see? As I went over that card, it jumped. I, 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 hopefully your cards aren't there. And if this has worked, this would be an absolute miracle. Sarah, was your card the King of Clubs? Yes, it was. Amazing. So one of the things that I like to do on the 5 by 5s I, I, I like to try and bring to your attention the interviews that are going to be coming up on the channel over the next few weeks and months. And one interview that I'm super excited I've managed to organise is with Jason Poulter. Now, Jason Poulter is a Canadian magician. If you don't know him, uh, he's famous for bringing out things like turn, third degree burn, um, uh, red carpet. I talked about red carpet earlier. That was marketed under his company. Um, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, he's an incredible creator a really, really good performer as well. If you ever saw him on uh, Foolus, Penn and Teller Foolus, doing The Space Between, which is his own creation, you see just how amazing he is. Anyway, I managed to arrange an interview with him. That interview is going to be coming soon on Talk Magic, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek of it. So here he is. This is the man behind the red carpet routine that you saw earlier on. This is a sneak peek of the Jason Poulter interview, which is going to be dropping soon on Magic TV. So the approach, you're right. You know, there's a theory that I had, and that is, and I don't think a lot of restaurant magicians understand this, and that is that the restaurant exists without you. It's going to serve guests. People are going to leave. People are going to come back. It exists without you. You are an enhancement to the guest's experience. Don't ever forget that. So when I'd be in restaurants and watch other magicians watching, they get upset when the servers come and interrupt them. Sorry, tough luck. That's how it goes. So you have to understand that the restaurant does well. You are there as a, an ambassador, maybe. Maybe to just help put the guests in a better mood. So when the kitchen's running late, because they will come back for the food, whether you're there or not. You are just, 
one reason hopefully that they will come back. So I think that's something that a lot of people who are doing restaurant magic have to remember, but us performers and our egos sometimes, I think that we um, sort of get lost in that. So I started to play with the servers and one restaurant in particular, I was there for 12 years, three nights a week. I outlasted six general managers. Um, and I, in all those 12 years, there was only one server that I had a bit of an issue with. She had an issue with me at her tables. Now she didn't last very long. She was only there for a few months. I don't think anybody else really liked her there either. And I don't think she worked well, but it was really interesting. I had servers who would beg me to come to their tables because when the guests are in a good mood, they're going to tip the servers better. Then the servers are making more money, then they're happy. Everyone's happy because what you're there to do is just make sure everyone's in a good mood. That's your job. And so I would learn to play with them when they'd approach the table. And I had lines that I would work on with them and, and uh, different things. And I, I always would say to them, and this is just some advice, I guess, that I would have other servers. Uh, so other magicians at restaurants to say, I would say to them, look, if I'm in the middle of something, if you got to put the food down, you put the food down. You guys are the priority, not me. The guests are the priority, not me. But if you can let me see you coming in your peripheral, because I might be just right at the climax of the trick where the ring is about to reappear. I'm pulling the coin out from their nostril or whatever. And you go and they turn and look and the food goes down. And all of a sudden I'm holding the coin. They go, yeah, but the waitress put the food down and that's how you did it. So it can sometimes be that, that, that moment where you're just about to actually come close to starting your own religion and they just appear with the food so what i would do sometimes because i would say i'll give you a look just say hang on a second okay now come in but if, if it's if it's hot if it's heavy if you're in the weeds really busy drop the food because you guys are the priority so so that was one thing i did but getting back to your earlier point about the approach is again remember most guests have no idea that there's a magician in the restaurant yeah. and i don't know what it's like performing where you are, but I'm, I'm in a suburb of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, I'm Toronto, a lovely city, but we're, n I find we, we're not as open-minded about a lot of this stuff. So, um, I would have, a, a there's a giant poster on the restaurant outside of me and guests still wouldn't even see it. So they were sort of shocked that I would come. So I would always let them know there's no charge. And that was the biggest thing that people are afraid they have to pay. So my approach was usually how are you? Now, a lot of magicians, restaurant magicians I've read and met guys over the years who like to start off right away with a trick. I think I, that doesn't resonate with me. You know what? They're there having a meal, first date, uh, talking about a divorce, uh, business meeting, uh, visiting the, the, uh, the town that they're in. It could be a wide range of things and you don't know and you are interrupting their personal space. So to me, I think you're cordial, you greet them. So my opening line would be something like, how are you tonight? My name is Jason, I'm the restaurant magician. And that'll always get a fun about, what? Restaurant magician, I said, I know, yes, they actually pay me to be here. I said, would you like to see some magic while you're waiting for your food? So uh, on this channel quite a lot, I talk about Rubik's Cube magic. And the reason is I'm a huge fan of magic with Rubik's Cubes. And I, there is going to be a video dropping soon in the Hows and Whys series, which is going to be the Hows and Whys of Rubik's Cube magic. But uh, one question that keeps coming up over and over again, especially on the Q&As, is what's your favourite way to open a Rubik's Cube set? And it's a really good question because the problem with Rubik's Cube magic is on the surface, there's only really two things that you can do with it which is solve two uh, solve a cube or match two cubes and that's why so many people go i don't like rubik's cube magic because there's very little you can do with it if you delve deeper into rubik's cube magic there is a lot more that you can do and i think when you're doing a rubik's cube routine the opening routine has to be really re it's really important because it has to establish credibility if you just take out a cube and then spend a couple of minutes solving it they're not going to find that very very interesting it's probably the equivalent of taking out a deck of cards and doing something like the 21 card trick or a whole bunch of dealing so you have to establish credibility first of all so a lot of the time if i'm doing walk around i like to just take a cube out and solve it for me that's like a really awesome way um but having said that um, I'd like to show you another way that I actually open up my Rubik Cube Act, which is a really cool way of opening it. And it uses Rubik's, uh, Rubik's Dream 360, which is a Henry Harrier's product. And uh, it, it's just a really easy trick to do. That's a great way to open a Rubik's Cube set. So I'm gonna show that to you. And I've got Sarah behind the camera. Hey, Sarah. Hey. So do you know what I've got inside this bag? 
I'm gonna guess I've, a Rubik's Cube. I've just been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually got more than just a Rubik's Cube though. I have stickers. Because do you know that statistically, most people that say they can solve a Rubik's Cube, what they actually do is they just peel the stickers off. Uh, and a Rubik's Cube nice. has six sides. And the six colours, one on each side. Now, what I also have here is a cube that hasn't had any stickers stuck on it. Now, when you're sticking stickers on a Rubik's Cube, you've got to be very, very, very specific because else it doesn't look very good. So let me ask you a question. If I gave you this cube, uh, which you can solve, actually, this is very easy to solve. And I gave you the stickers and I told you to put all the stickers on the cube. How long do you reckon it would take you? Mm, I don't know. Take a while. A little while. Yeah, Take a quite a minutes, while. It'll take yeah. a few minutes. Well, look, I'm going to pop the cube right here inside the bag, and I'm going to try and do this in record time, okay? Okay. So it goes right there inside the bag. There we go. Record time. I want you to watch the stickers. I'm going to do it in less than three seconds. Are you ready? Okay. Watch the stickers. Here we go. One, two... Three and check that out. Now I don't know if these guys can see that on the camera, but these the stickers have gone. You can actually see where they were, and the stickers have actually gone. They are no longer there. This sticker has disappeared. This sticker has disappeared. All the stickers have gone, which leaves the question: Where have the stickers gone? Well, you're not going to believe this, but now inside the bag, right there on the cube, we have the stickers. Okay. There's the bag. There's the cube, and now we can get on with our favourite routine. So there you go. That's a really nice opener with a uh, with a Rubik's cube. So this is a Rubik's cube 360, a Rubik's Dream 360 that allows you to do this. All you have to do is get an unstickered cube, which you can get from Henry or any good magic dealers that stock Henry's products. Get yourself a Rubik's Dream 360, um, and it's really nice using one of those because you've got that nice subtlety at the end that allows you to spin the cube. Um, and, and you just make the stickers disappear, apparently, and you make them go on the bag. The nice thing is you don't even need to be able to solve a cube in order to do this trick. So somebody who doesn't do cube magic, you could even put this in your act. You could talk about how, hey, you know, there's a lot of magicians these days that do Rubik's Cube magic. I don't uh, because, you know, I, I'm not very good at it. But, uh, you know, I used to pull the stickers off. Did anyone else pull the stickers off? Well, you know, being a magician. because I, I couldn't do it. There you go, exactly. <laughs> well, being a magician, let me show you. Um, you know, if you do pull the stickers off, how you can fix that. And it's a really nice way to go into it. If you are going to transition from this into any of the Rubik's Cube Acts, what I typically would do is scrunch the bag up once I've shown it's empty, reach over into my case for another cube or something else, and then I can switch this for uh, a regular cube as I go and get that thing out, and I can go into the, uh, the rest of the act. But it's a really, really nice way to open your Rubik's Cube set. And one thing that I want you to take home from this little five-minute segment here is making sure that you're establishing credibility when you first start performing. Whatever the prop, whether it's a Rubik's Cube, a pack of cards, a coin, or whatever it is that you're using, you need to make sure that people are invested in what you're doing. And the best way to do that is show them something that they don't expect. You see a cube, you expect to solve it. You don't expect stickers to jump onto it by magic. Okay, guys, I want to tell you a funny story now that maybe has even got a lesson attached to it that we can all learn from. I do like telling funny stories. I mean, so much stuff has happened to me through my, throughout my career that I could probably just fill 100 videos with stories about stuff that's happened. Uh, but there's one story in particular that I'm going to tell. Now, this is going way, way back. This must be about 15 or 16 years ago. I was working with a magician. I don't think it's fair to say who the guy's name is. He's no longer in magic. Um, it was like way back. He was in magic for a while. Now he's not and um I, we were doing a wedding together there was this uh, there was this wedding booking and they booked two magicians so i had him come along with me and um he was relatively new as i said to magic he'd done some restaurants he'd done some uh, he'd done some close up work uh but he'd only just turned sort of professional if that made sense so he was still kind of nervous which is absolutely fine he was still kind of nervous and for him this wedding that i took him to was kind of a high profile gig it was kind of a big gig he'd just done sort of family restaurants uh, restaurants up until this point and they booked us to do mix and mingle for 2 hours so the whole idea was um, you mingled around and you did magic close up, mix and mingle, that sort of thing, right? Uh, and the reason they had two magicians is there was like 150 people there. And it was a massive venue, but everybody, it was absolutely bucketing it down outside and everybody was inside. And they'd shut off a lot of the venue 
um, because that was where everything else was going to be taking place later on. So we're having this whole mix and mingle situation in what was in essence two rooms and everybody was crammed into it like a sardine tin. I'm sure you've all been there at gigs before where you kind of like crammed into a sardine tin. It's like there's just people everywhere. It'd be the sort of thing that like during COVID that everybody would be like, no, no, no. It was, it was like that rammed, right? And the weird thing was one of the two, two toilets that are accessible, two toilet blocks that are accessible, but one of them had, had been shut off. Um, and so we got there just before the people were coming in. They were, they were getting married and they were going to come into this room. And, uh, and I said to him, hey, you know, you do your thing. I'll do my thing. We'll meet up at the end and we'll have a chat and drink. And he was like, yeah, cool, no problem. And I didn't see him. The last thing I saw him say was, I'm going to go to the toilet. And I didn't see him at all. Like I was running around like crazy. And I was looking out for him because it wasn't that big a room. And I was thinking, well, maybe I can hear the reactions. And there were no reactions coming from somewhere. I'm like, what, what is this guy doing wrong? And I couldn't see him anywhere in the, in the gig. He wasn't, I just, I just didn't see him. And at the end of the two hours, slightly after the two hours, they siphoned into another room to have like a wedding breakfast or whatever. And then I saw him coming out the toilets and I was like, where were you? I didn't see you at all during the gig. He's like, I, I was stuck in the toilets. I'm like, what? Sorry. He's like, yeah, I was stuck in the toilets. What, how, how long for? For two hours. Wait, you didn't actually do anything. No, I was stuck in the toilets. I'm like, how, how could you have been stuck in the toilets? And he told me this story about how he went to the toilets before, the, uh, before it started. And he went into the toilet, had to sit down. You know what I mean? He was doing the number, two, number two. And then everybody came in and, and they had people coming into the toilet. There was only one sit down toilet in there. And somebody went to try the door. And, and he was like nervous because he didn't want people to see the magician was sitting on the toilet for some reason. I don't know why. So he just thought, well, if I just sit there, some they'll go away and then I can and then I can come out and, and start performing and people and, and he heard someone go away and just as he was coming out the toilet somebody else tried the toilet and apparently he just sat there for two hours desperately trying to find a time where he could use the toilet and apparently people were knocking on the door obviously getting more annoyed going oh this is just ridiculous and I was there running around like a blue ass fly doing this gig trying to run around to as many people as possible and he was stuck literally stuck in the toilet and he didn't even come out and do one trick he didn't do anything so a it was an insane situation I was like I can't believe you've done that that's just ridiculous luckily the client didn't realize because I was running around like crazy so they seemed happy and they were only half watching anyway because obviously it was their wedding but I I think the moral of this story is don't be afraid to go to the toilet and come out like I, I don't even know what the guy's thinking was behind this to be perfectly honest don't be afraid to come out of the toilet if you've gone to the toilet and people are using it it's not embarrassing to have them think the magician's in the toilet maybe he was in there for a while and he was a bit lazy and he I, I don't know what the reason was it was insane but big piece of advice for you when you start performing professionally go and perform magic don't spend two hours sitting on a toilet pretending to do magic. It's not a good situation. Thanks very much for watching, guys. That's another five by five in the bag. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And also, don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. If you want to see any five by five specials, let me know. I can do them on pretty much anything. So if you do want to see a five by five special, let me know. And don't forget, I'm going to be here tomorrow with three videos. At two o'clock, there's going to be a short. At six o'clock, there's going to be a magic live. And then at nine o'clock, we got to talk magic interview. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.